guys, welcome back. And if it's your first time joining us, I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Today, as promised, we're doing a video on more laughing for stucco. And the difference between this job and the last video we did is this particular project here is open stud construction. There was a fire here, burn all the guts of the house out, and they rebuilt it. And now we're here today to do the lathing. And we have paperback wire today, which has a line wire built into the system so it makes it easier so you don't have to run line wire every six inches all the way up which is time consuming but we do spend a little bit more money for the paperback wire and i really don't like doing open stud construction because it takes longer to do uh, the the, uh, the lath and it's more baggy it takes more mud to put on it's just slower slows us down uh, one of the advantages of, of this type of a system is Theoretically, it will crack less than a project that has shear wall on it. So that's one advantage. But this is a uh, south. This is a southwestern exposure. So this is going to get the brunt of the weather. This is going to crack a lot over here on this side. We need to install these five by fourteen inch uh, foundation vents. And if you can see down here along the bottom. Uh, they have uh, something sticking out each one of the vents, which is going to make it more difficult for us, but it's got to be done. Just going to require a little slice right here and then some trimming for the pipes to come through. We have a little bit of weep to install, where some uh, weep has come off on the end, and then we're going to go ahead and start with our paperback wire. Okay, this is the wire we're using. It's Gray D 60 minute paperback lath. It has the line wire incorporated into the system, which keeps you from having to have to manually put the line wire uh, on the wall itself every six inches all the way up. And we don't have any starter wire with us today. We don't have a starter roll. We don't really need it. The wall is only 30 feet wide. So what I've done is I cut 10 inch strips and put those on first and then put the first belt of wire on and then that's it you don't have to do that anymore um, so when you're putting like the second and the third belt above that uh, the, the paper is already cut behind the wire so that you get a nice overlap anytime you overlap uh, anytime you have an overlap you, you can't just use a butt end you have to cut the paper back to expose the wire so you have wire over wire if you don't do that I guarantee you that it will crack So, pretty simple. Over here, I'm just pulling back the paper and the wire. I'm going to slip my new paper behind that existing paper and get a nice seal. Okay, this paper here that I'm using is single ply 60 minute paper. And I'm folding it into thirds and I'm going to cut it with my shears. And then I'm going to install it at the top of the weep. And that's going to be my flashing for the bottom. Okay guys, here we go. It's been about four hours now since we started installing these vents and running our paper on the bottom, our starter paper. Now we're finally ready to start lathing. And I got my bags on. These bags are just about 20 pounds worth of tools here. I got my trim knife here. Uh, I'm going to need that. I got a full bag of nails. What do I got in here? Looks like I got inch and a half roofing nails here. Galvanized. Uh, I got my tin snips. 
I got my chalk, even though it's paperback and the studs are open, I mark the studs anyway as I go. In case we happen to get the wire kind of tight and we can't tell where the stud is. Uh, so anyway, I got my tape measure, got my lathing axe, I have my, I have my sh uh, hand tacker stapler, I have my shears here, and I wish they fit in the bag a little bit better. I'm going to have to start putting them in like this, they come out a little bit better. So I'm pretty ready to go here now. When you start running your paper, you have obstacles in the way, like this hose bib right here. I could run my paper just up to the, maybe six inches past the hose bib and cut it and make a slice right about where the, uh, a slice, a horizontal slice in the paper where the hose bib is and then come back the other way with another piece of paper over it to the next stud. But I'm just gonna run this all the way through. I'm gonna notch out for the hose bib. I'll notch out for the clean out, the condensation line, and the air conditioning unit over there. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple of nails in this end piece right here. I've got my uh, paper back pulled out all the way to this end piece here. So, I wanna make sure you pull the flap up. The very first thing, I mean, you can do that later, just don't nail up here where the flap is, or you're going to tear the paper when you try to get a nail in it. Run your, uh, make sure your wire is sitting right on top of the weep down here. Now that I've got a couple of nails in it, I can stretch it out a distance. Get another nail in it down here. Get another nail in it down here. Now I'm going to pull it tight as I can. Oh, that's right in between the crotch of the wire. So I'm going to have to put two nails in it right here. That'll hold it for a minute. Then you want to pull this flap up. And I got this wrist brand I like to use too. Somewhere in between where you have nails, you want to start getting some nails in it. Right here. These roofing nails take a little bit longer to get in. What do we got here? A hose bib? nice little inspection hole so I can see the hose bib. There we go. What do we got here? A clean out? Okay. Okay guys, before we can get another belt up here, what we need to do is we need to counter flash underneath this window. So, the way I do it is I just take some paper, and by the way, this is 60 minute paper right here, 60 minute. So anyway, I take the 60 minute paper and I slip it up underneath here. It's just a single single layer of paper here. If this, if this was sheer wall, this would be two layers of paper. right at the top of the wire here. You might tuck it down there a little bit, but the main thing is to cut it right at the top of the wire without cutting the paper behind it. Okay, now we're set, we can put another belt right up here.
Okay guys, here we go. I got my wrist magnet on. I'm gonna go ahead and load that up right now. I really like this tool. It uh, is really simple if you can remember that you have it with you. You know, so when you're up there, you don't have to reach in your bag. And sometimes I'll reach in my bag anyway and forget that I have this on and then kind of feel silly afterwards. But, and here's another tool I forgot to mention earlier. A pair of bull nips should be in your bags as well. This is great for pulling out nails. Okay guys, well that was a success. Always remember that the flap goes up, but you want to remember to flap it before you start putting nails in along the top edge of that lath. Okay guys, so we're almost done with this little gable here. Just a little bit more to do. Uh, the next step we're going to do is uh, we're going to counter flash this vent up here and that attic vent. And uh, down we're going to slide some paper up underneath the little flange on the vent and run it down over the top of the paper on this piece of lath here. Same thing with the attic vent. Now there's two ways we can do this gable up here. Uh, one way is to uh, take a piece 25 feet long and run it all the way down there to that end and then curl it up over here on the edge and uh, up at the top of the roof line there and then snip it off. Or we can take a, uh, oh, a 10 or a 15 foot piece and run it from the center out, uh, say five feet both ways, and then run a piece of wire about, uh, what looks like about 15 feet from the apex all the way down over here to this little piece up in here on both sides. So what I like to do is I like to take the 10 foot piece, 10 or 15 foot piece, and run it right here. But uh, what I will do first is start the piece on both sides from the top of the gable down on both sides and then I'll know what dimension to cut that piece of paper and tuck it in underneath the piece of paper that I'm going to put on the top. Okay guys we're about done with this little gable here. Just a couple more steps and we'll be through. First thing we're going to do is we're going to staple off this top before we pull the scaffold down and the last thing we're going to do is seal the holes. That's the last step, and then we can pull the scaffold down, staple the bottom off, seal the bottom, go inside the house. Since we have the opportunity, there's no sheetrock on yet, so we can seal any daylight we see coming through. It's perfect because the sun is right there shining on this wall, so we won't have any problem seeing daylight. So, you want to make sure you got plenty of oil in your gun before you start. We're using inch and a quarter pass load staples. It's ready to go. It's all stapled off and sealed, ready to go. Now the last step in this procedure is to go inside the house and seal any areas where light is coming through. So let's go inside there and see how well we did. We have a big tear in the paper right here that needs to be sealed up. This over here is where there's an issue with the, uh, the firebox. We're waiting for the contractor to put in an access panel on the side so we can finish that section up. Same thing down there. But the rest of this looks pretty good. I've got a couple holes right here that need, it's very important that we seal those up. Now right here, we can see some daylight coming through in here and back over in here. And up here I notice there's a big hole that needs to be sealed up. Here's some more small holes here. Wherever you see daylight coming through, squirt some caulking in it and you're gonna be good to go. There's one, there's one up there. Not bad though. The overall job looks pretty good. It took us a little bit more time than I'd hoped to do it. Okay guys, we're done with this video on lathing for stucco using paperback wire. 
I got JR going around doing the final caulking on the inside of the building. Then we're going to call for a lath inspection. And then they'll do the sheetrock. And then we can come and do the plastering outside. And stay tuned because we got a whole mess of stuff coming up. We've got some great material. We've got some new updated plastering videos. And we'll see you next time.